Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's that magical time of year where all the good children gather around the fire and talk about how shit Gloucester are. And all the bad little boys and girls, they run straight to hell. We've now reached the halfway stage to the 2023-2024 Gallagher Premiership season. And we'll be talking about who's made the good list and who's made the naughty list and whatever other obligatory Christmas allegory we can make as we look ahead to the second half of the season. So, sit back. Gather your loved ones and drink your overpriced Baileys. This is the Gallagher Premiership mid-season review. 10th, Newcastle Falcons. Zero wins, nine losses, four points. I don't think anybody expected too much from Newcastle this season, but things have gotten pretty much as bad as they can get. The club is clearly in a transitional period, with sustainability being the goal. I mean, they can't bring in any big signings and instead have to build a lighter squad built around a core of youthful talent. But despite the nine losses, they have been competitive in a good handful of fixtures. However, they've only scored 20 or more points on two occasions this season, with the squad trying to instead prevent teams from opening the floodgates against them rather than imposing legitimate attacking threats. Whether they will be able to pick up a win this season is doubtful but one can only hope there are brighter days ahead for the club of Wilkinson and Weir. The Premiership is a better competition with a strong Falcon side in it. Ninth, Gloucester. Two wins, seven losses, 14 points. Gloucester's season got off to a pretty solid start with a tight win at home against Quinns and a solid win away at Newcastle Falcons. However, since then, it's been nothing but pain for the people at King's home. They lost 3-21 at home to Saracens, and this is when they were still missing their international starters, such as Jamie George, Mauro Toje, Owen Fowler, and most of their regular starters. They then rotated their squad heavily and suffered a 24th 10 defeat away at Sale, seemingly saving their big stars for the biggest home game of the season against Bath, only to suffer their biggest ever home defeat to Bath, losing 27 to 45. They were inches away from a shock win at Sandy Park, leading nine with by nine with five minutes to go, only to concede 10 in the last five minutes to lose 25-24. They lost again at home to Leicester before suffering a record-breaking 51-26 defeat away to Bristol. And despite a late comeback, they went into the halfway stage of the season losing again at King's home, being defeated 29-31 by the Saints. Despite being a pillar of English rugby, Gloucester have only reached the playoffs twice in the last 15 seasons, and barring any miracles, this will be their fifth season in a row where they failed to reach the top four. It seems unlikely they'll finish bottom, but it is not in any way out of the question, especially considering they have just won two games out of their last 15 in the Premiership. Going into 2024, it will take a miracle to save Jules Givington's career at Gloucester. 8. Gloucester Tigers. 4 wins, 5 losses, 20 points. It's been a mixed start for the season for the Tigers, and going into the halfway point of the year, it's hard to judge if they're going to be playoff contenders or if they're going to be stuck in a rut by season's end. Their season started poorly with two back-to-back -back losses to Bristol and Sale at home, but they seemed to find their footing when they got a last-minute win at the rec in round three, but this seemed to be more of a false dawn. They lost their following game away to Saracens without a bonus point and followed that up with a defeat at home to Harlequins. Despite winning just one in their first five, they found some form in the next few games, defeating old rivals Northampton at home, Gloucester away for the Slater Cup, and thrashing Newcastle 47-3 at home. But this run of form seemingly ended after they suffered a 29-10 defeat away to Chiefs, in a game where they were outclassed in every area. It seems for now that Leicester is a team capable of winning their big marquee matches against their old foes, but can't pull together a run of form. The Tigers should be aiming to finish top four come season's ends, but heading to the New Year's class with Bath, while you would fancy them as favourites since they're playing at home, a loss here would be catastrophic to their campaign. As for now, it's hard to judge just how good of a team they really are. 7th, Bristol Bears. 4 wins, 5 losses, 21 points. The Bristol Dizzle started at year 3 of Pat Lamb's ridiculous 7 year contract pretty well. After years of misfiring, it seemed like the Bears may finally be playoff contenders again. They hammered Leicester 25-14 to open the season and followed up with a 33-27 win away at Northampton. 
Oh wow, everyone thought. This might be Bristol's year, we all exclaimed. But things very slowly started to drip. It was like an ice cream that was fresh out of a wrapper, probably like a magnum, and it just slowly started to drip until all you had was the stick, and the stick said, Four more years of Pat Lamb, baby! They lost narrowly at home to Harlequins 21-23, not the end of the world. Then they lost 29-20 to the Chiefs, which is okay, nobody beats the Chiefs at Sandy Park. Then they lost 13-27 to Sale Sharks, oh no. Then they lost 20-19 at the Wreck, oh dear. Then he lost 39-31 to to Saris, and now that's five losses in a row, and they're thinking of sacking Pat Lamb. Oh damn. The Bears got some redemption by hammering Gloucester, so good for them. And then he beat Newcastle away, so again, good for them. But it really does feel like those opening two games were just a blip. Bristol is a good team and can compete with and beat anybody on their day, but their day doesn't come around very often. The table looks a bit flattering to them right now, and in all honesty, while they are comfortably better than Gloucester and the Falcons... I doubt they're even in the hunt for the top six right now. Sixth, Harlequins. Five wins, four losses, 26 points. Harlequins are really good, guys. With like one notable exception, they have been so good this season. Yes, losing to Gloucester sucks, but away from home, opening night, most of your stars are in the World Cup. I, I get it. But then they really got going. They defeat Exeter 22-14 and still win Ashton Gate against Bristol. They dominate Newcastle, they beat Tigers at Welford Road. Oh my god, this is their year. Oh, what? How did this happen? They lost 10 to 38 to Saracens, which is not good. That's not very good at all. But even then, despite losing a gaining respectful man to Northampton, they dominated 36 3 against Sale. I, I, I don't understand the whiplash I'm getting from these results and making my head hurt. When they faced Bath, they didn't play badly, but the Bathonians completely outmatched them in all areas, and they look like a much less competent team right now. So, how good are Quinns really? They're, they're very good, as I said, they're amazing. They're really exciting to watch, but they're not title contenders. I think they might be next year, but not this year. They need to put a few more things together for them to really be fighting at the top. With that being said, they are 100% in the playoff hunt. There's just a few teams with it together a little bit more. Fifth, Saracens. Five wins, four losses, 26 points. Saracens' start of the season was definitely delayed due to their squad being the spine of the England team, resulting in them being without their star players and some crucial stars in the early games. You can argue they still would have lost to Exeter at Sandy Park and Bath at home without the top stars, which I can see more so the former than the latter, but it certainly didn't help that the likes of Owen Fowler, Mara Toje, Jamie George, they weren't playing. But with that being said, once they did return, this was a really good team. And they basically dominated the rest of the competition, winning the next five games pretty handsomely. But then they lost at home to Northampton and away to Sale. I mean, they are expecting to lose away to Sale, but losing to Northampton at home is pretty shocking for a team that is of the calibre of Saracens. With that being said, I still feel like they're going to make the playoffs very comfortably. I still think they are England's best team. I mean, they lost to London Irish last year and in an upset, but they still, you know, dominate the rest of the league. So I don't think these are too big of a deal, like, in the grand scheme of things. Do I think they'll top the table? I'll get to that later, but as things stand, there's a lot to improve in the second half of their season. But I think they are still favourites to take the title. Fourth, Exeter Chiefs. Six wins, three losses, 28 points. Huh. I uh, I didn't see this coming. I think a lot of people were surprised by Exeter this season, with so many stars leaving. Most people thought this would be a season of transition for Exeter, and if I'm being honest, I kind of thought they'd finish like 8th or maybe ninth. I had a predictions video that never came out. Um, I'm kind of glad it didn't, because I thought this season was going to be really bad for Exeter and they would really struggle. But um, no, they're, they're really good. They haven't lost at Sandy Park in over 400 days, and... As Northampton proved last season, if you just win your home games, you have a pretty good chance of making the playoffs. Exeter don't have a brilliant away record with just one win to their name against Newcastle, but they're undefeated at home. They smashed Saracen 65-10 and breeze through Sale 43-0. Those are last year's finalists, and they smoked them. Exeter have been ludicrously good at home and are a massive threat to anyone in the league, but honestly, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs this year. 
as good as they are, this is a few teams that I think have proven that they can win at home and away. And honestly, I think what really cemented this in my mind was their performance against Bath. Um, they played well against Bath, but they were just like not on their level. And I just don't think they have the consistency away from home to really make it into the playoffs this year. Who knows, I may be wrong, but right now, I think next year is going to be better than this year for the Chiefs. Third, Northampton Saints. Six wins, three losses, 30 points. People are sleeping on this Saints team. Like, am I crazy? Because with the exceptions to that loss to Bristol, they've been on fire this season. They only lost two more times to Sell and Leicester away from home, and yeah, you would expect that they would lose those games. They were tight games, and it would be sh a shock if they did beat Sell at their impenetrable home stadium, and Leicester, their biggest rivals at Welford Road. Excluding those results, and Bristol, they've been superb. I always sort of forget how good of a side Northampton are, because they've been such an incredible side for a long time that it kind of just fades into the back of my mind, because they're not quite the level of Saracens in terms of silverware, but they've been incredibly consistent. They've made the playoffs in nine of the last 14 seasons. Like, that's incredible. I don't feel like they get the recognition they probably deserve. I don't think they're being talked up enough as genuine title contenders this season. I mean, it's because they have only won one title in those nine playoff appearances, but they were comfortably better than Bath at home. They breezed past X to the next week. Yeah, they lost to Tigers at Welford Road, but then they came back with a win against Quinns. And they followed this up by beating Saracens 12-18 to on their own turf as payback for knocking them out of the playoffs. Just last Saturday, they beat Gloucester at King's Home to win another home away game. And next week, they host Sale in a game where I think they're pretty comfortably the favourites. I think they'll win pretty, pretty convincingly. The Saints are hardly unbeatable, and they aren't favourites, but in my mind, they're one of the just four teams in this league who are genuine title contenders. They're really good, guys. Second, Sale Sharks. Seven wins, two losses, 31 points. It's kind of nuts that Sale are this high up and yet have a negative points difference, but also the most wins in the league. It's because Sale are a really good team at winning when it matters. They are unbeatable at home, and they've beaten all three of their major title challengers in Northampton, Bath and Saracens at home this season. But they look a little shaky, because while they are good at winning and they have proved that they are hard to beat, away from home especially, they are beatable. They dominated the lower teams of the league home and away, but while they won against those three aforementioned teams at home, it was a little shaky and could have gone either way. This isn't to say it diminishes their wins, in fact it enhances them, but in the reverse six fixtures, I think they're going to lose all three of them, because when Sale faced the more competitive teams away from home, i.e. Exeter and Quinns, they were hammered, losing 43-0 to Exeter and 36-3 to Harlequins. Those are huge losses, and while I expect Sale to get those wins back when they play them at home, it hardly cements them as the team to beat this year. I think when it comes to the playoffs, if they can hold up Exeter and Quinns for a top four spot, they will be a huge threat. But right now, while they are in the title fight, they don't look like the biggest fish in the pond. First, Bath Rugby. Six wins, three losses, 32 points. I actually think this might be Bath's year. I know how biased I am. I know you know that already. But genuinely, this team is the total package, and they're getting stronger and stronger. Let's start with the negatives. Yes, they have lost three games this season. Those are the negatives. Because even in those losses, they were ridiculously close. Bath are literally two dropped balls away from two extra wins this season, six extra points, and going into the second half of the season with a seven-point lead. A dropped ball in a restart that uh, led to the Tigers getting the scrum in a last-minute kick a goal, they lost them that match. A ball drop over the touch lane in the last play of the game against Northampton lost in that match. Look, the fact that these things did happen, it doesn't, you know, I'm not saying that Bath are hypothetically better than they are. I'm saying in defeat, it was by the smallest of margins. Even in the Sale game, they defended, defended like champions the whole game and led for 70 minutes. They've picked up the crucial losing bonus points and winning the bonus points when it mattered, with has allowed them to take the hot spot into Christmas. And honestly, I think they're going to be even better in the second half of the season than they have been in the first half. They play their biggest threats, Harry's, Sale and Northampton, all at the rack in the second half of the season, 
and despite the lesser defeat, the wreck has become a fortress for the club. It is, I can't understate how huge it is for Bath to get a win away at Saris. Yeah, they didn't beat their A team, but they took crucial points away from major title challenger away from home. And that's pretty massive for them. Because home field advantage is a real thing in this league. Like, statistically, teams beat their major rivals at home. It just, like, look at Sale. They beat Northampton, Bath, and Saracens at home. They're three major title rivals. And if you look at the reverse fixtures, I would fancy Sale to lose all three of those games. So the fact that Bath can get a big win against Saracens at Sarri's home turf, that's a big deal because it points, it puts crucial points on the table. Because Bath are leading coming into Christmas. They are leading. They have won the first half of the season. They're on top. So, you could argue that there's other teams better than them. You could argue that Northampton may be a better than them. You could have to argue that Saracens are probably definitely a better team than Bath are. But right now, they're on top of the table, and they have crucial points. Which means, going into the next half of the season, Bath are going to be a really hard team to knock off that top spot. They're going to be a hard team to compete against. I can't help but think that if Bath are able to go into the new year, defeat the High Tigers at Welford Road, and go into 2024 on top of the table... They may just be able to hold on all the way to the end. So, how will the table shape up at the end of the year? Well, here are just my predictions. 10th, Newcastle Falcons. 9th, Gloucester. 8th, the Bristol Bears. 7th, Leicester Tigers. 6th, Harlequins. 5th, Exeter Chiefs. 4th, Sale Sharks. 3rd, Northampton Saints. Second, Saracens, and first, Bath. And I know I sound biased and fanboyy as hell. I am a Bath fan, but I'm not saying this because I think Bath are a better team than Saracens. I really don't. I'm saying this because Bath right now have a big points advantage over Saracens. They have favourable fixtures. They're already on top. I think they'll be able to hold on. I think Sale's poor away record might catch up with them. Same with Esther Chiefs. I think they may slip down the table. I think Northampton are going to be pretty consistently in that title fight as well. I'm not even going to bother predicting playoffs because this is a hypothetical situation anyway. So, yeah, those are just my predictions. Obviously, they're not anything to be taken too seriously. I am just one biased rugby fan. But, yeah, this has been the Rugby Recitation Premiership Rugby Mid-Season Review. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I hope I've been fair to whatever team you support. And it's been a very good start to the season. Obviously, I miss the likes of Worcester. I miss the London Irishes. I miss Wasps. I wish Jersey Reds were still with us. Obviously, English rugby is not in the best of state right now. But on-field product is good. On-field product is very competitive. There are six teams, maybe seven if you include Leicester, that are in the playoff hunt. It's a very exciting time to be a rugby fan. This has been Rugby Recitation. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment, and all that good, good stuff that I have to say as a YouTuber. <laughs> this has been Rugby Recitation, and I'll see you next time.